In this video, I'm going to talk about Eratosthenes and one of the famous astronomical calculations from the ancient world. Eratosthenes is the guy who figured out how far it is around the Earth. He was able to measure the circumference of the Earth, and he got it right to a surprising degree of accuracy. And I'll show you how he did it. It's really pretty cool. Here's a picture of Eratosthenes. He was Greek, but he lived a significant part of his life in Egypt. Here's a map of Egypt. He lived in Alexandria, which is up here on the north coast. And Alexandria was the home of the Great Library, one of the, the massive libraries, especially for the time. They had tens of thousands of volumes of books at a time when paper and printing weren't even around. The, the Great Library is one of the wonders of the ancient world, and he was the head librarian of the Great Library. He also knew about this town upriver, up the Nile River, Aswan is up here. Aswan is where they've built a dam, and you see the lake backed up from the dam on this map. The Nile, remember, flows north into the Mediterranean. And Aswan is pretty close to south of Alexandria. Not directly, but Alexandria is here, and Aswan's here. And at the time, the town of Aswan was known as Syene. That was the name of the town. In, in the ancient world, in ancient Egypt. And there's something peculiar about the town of Syene. It was at 23.5 degrees north latitude. And what that means is that if you have the Earth, and here's the equator, so this is the center of the Earth right here. If you are on the Earth at this point, you're on the equator. If you travel north, and you stop at a point here, such that this angle is 23.5 degrees, that means that you, at that point, are on a point at the Earth's surface that is 23.5 degrees north latitude. And Syene was at that point, 23.5 degrees north of the equator. Now take a look at this diagram. This is the Earth moving around the Sun, and we're looking at this from a, a, a side view, so the plane of the Earth's orbit would run horizontally through this picture. The Earth would move from left to right as it moved around the Sun. And if, you, if you're taking notes on the printed notes, find the place where it talks about this diagram and draw this into your notes, the diagram of the Earth moving around the Sun. Now it turns out that Earth's axis is tilted. The 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 equator is not horizontal. If you picture the plane of the Earth's orbit around the Sun, so let me draw in a horizontal line here. That line represents the plane of the orbit. Well, the, the Earth's equator is inclined at a 23 and a half degree angle to that plane. Or in other words, if you were to draw the axis of the Earth, so this direction is north, the, the Earth is tilted 23.5 degrees away from vertical, vertical being perpendicular to the plane of the orbit. So this angle right here is also 23.5 degrees. So in other words, the town of Syene happens to be at the same latitude as the tilt of the Earth. And that means we could draw a diagram something like this. The Earth's equator would be running at an angle like this. And at 23.5 degrees north latitude, so that angle right there is 23.5 degrees, the town of Syene is right there. So that means when the Earth is in this position, when the, when the, the, Earth's, the Earth's axis is tilted toward the sun, the maximum amount, that means the sun is directly overhead in Syene exactly at noon. And that's the situation we see in this picture. Here's the town of Syene, and these rays of sunlight are coming straight down into Syene. And people knew that at the time, because there was a deep well in Syene, and the wells are obviously vertical, and the light would shine all the way to the bottom of the well one day during the year. At noon, when the sun was right overhead on the longest day of the year, the sun would reach the bottom of the well. And uh, uh, Eratosthenes up here in Alexandria knew that and he took that opportunity to make a measurement. He said if the sun is directly overhead in Syene then it won't be directly overhead in Alexandria. Because of the curvature of the earth right here 
the rays of sunlight coming straight into Alexandria won't be vertical. So he set up a pole, and this is exaggerated, obviously, and, and you can get a pole perfectly vertical because you can hang a line with a rock tied to it, what they call a plumb line, and you can make sure it's exactly vertical. So he could set up a pole that was exactly vertical, and the, the ray of sunlight coming past the, the tip of that pole would cause it to cast a shadow because the pole was vertical compared to the surface of the earth and the sunlight at Alexandria would be coming in at an angle relative to the earth's surface or relative to the pole and Eratosthenes realized that if you were to extend this ray of light coming in at Syene it would go all the way all the way to the center of the earth if you were to extend that line and he realized that if you were to extend this ray of light coming in at Alexandria, it would miss the center of the Earth. But the pole set up, which was vertical, if you were to extend that line, it would go to the center of the Earth. So he had a diagram, something like this. And in geometry, we know that two parallel lines like this that are cut by what we call a transversal form what we know as alternate interior angles. And specifically, this angle here is equal to this angle there. And you might be able to see that even if you haven't had geometry. But Eratosthenes knew geometry. Euclid's elements would have been in the library of Alexandria, and he would have had access to that. And he was very well studied in math and science. And he realized that this angle would be the same as this angle. And he could measure this angle right here. He could just take a protractor or, or the equivalent, something equivalent to that, and measure that angle. And he did. And he found out that that was 7.2 degrees, where one degree is a 360th of a circle. So he could do a calculation. 360 divided by 7.2 comes out to exactly 50. So he knew that that angle 7.2 degrees, which was also this angle here at the, at the center. He knew that that was 7.2 degrees. And that was 1 50th of a circle. So it stood to reason that this distance, the distance from Syene to Alexandria, was 1 50th of the entire distance around the Earth. So then he realized, if I can just measure the distance from Alexandria to Syene, I can calculate the entire distance around the Earth. It's just going to be that distance multiplied by 50. And, so, and he knew that that distance was about 5,000 stadia. That was a unit of measurement of length at the time. It's the, basically the, the length of a stadium the, where they would have sports. And we're not exactly sure how long the stadia was that he was using, but if we use what we, what we know as the Egyptian stadia at the time, that puts Eratosthenes' result within a few percent of the best value that we have today, which is just really an astonishing degree of accuracy. He could just take this 5,000 stadia and multiply by 50. 5,000 stadia is this distance from Alexandria to Syene, and 5,000 times 50 comes out to about... 250,000 stadia for the distance around the Earth. And Eratosthenes did that. No special tools or instruments other than the ability to measure one angle. Uh, just some good thinking, some good geometry, some good math, and some good understanding of the physical world, the sunlight and the nature of the Earth. And he did it, and he pulled it off, and he got it right.